of Cairns Regional Council, which I'm an employee of. Um, so this is all my personal opinion and not reflective of any other opinions and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to get too quiet there, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so QGIS was something I got into after I got into ArcMap and it was based on the fact that we needed to share something to um, Kogan Creek um, Power Station uh, in the consultancy I used to work with. So we built a spatial database, as it were, where we took um, their yearly, um, their yearly uh, ortho orthographic photos and uh, site photos, and we put them all into a QGIS space, and we were able to package that up, that up and for them to use that and build on that year to year. Uh, something I was going to say to uh, Mike who did the presentation on mine management was, where is Mike, is he here? No. Um, there's a really cool tool in, in plugins in QGIS called Profiler and it allows you to do multiple profiles over DEMs and look at the changes over time in those profiles. So that's a pretty cool plugin that um, I haven't found many other places. Uh, while you're still uploading, I'll, I'll just let you know, like this is my workspace, this is how I manage my workspace. Uh, in QGIS, you can set it up any number of ways, and obviously it's the most stable download, uh, which is Hanover. I think there's a, a later one, but I always go for the most stable because I have had issue in the past. Uh, so what I'll do first off when I come into my workspace is uh, I'll right-click on the menu, um, or the ribbon area, and I'll add the add the panels that I want. Um, put in right away. So usually I used, uh, you, know, you know, use these uh, um, plugins and tools like my um, label editor, my vector editor, and um, polygon editor or advanced digitizing tools. A lot of these, yeah, there you go. So if you go into the three vertical ellipses, it will give you the name of the um, tool that's there. So a lot of these will have little vertical ellipses and you just sort of hover over it. This is a plugin called Snapping, which is pretty cool. Uh, and your plugins that I've recommended you download, purely because we'll talk about the issue I had with Qtopo where um, the WMS has a restricted scale on the imagery. Uh, so we were in the document I've, s I've sent out to you, we're working towards uh, s this output, which is basically using um, uh, Queensland street maps, or street maps, open street maps, sorry, and looking at um, uh, small lots and larger lots and their interaction with the um, with a regional ecosystem within defined suburbs of Cairns and the size of those suburbs. Uh, there's a little bit more mathematics that we could have done behind that to find out how much each regional ecosystem in, uh, in, um, is within those suburb boundaries, but, uh, and there was a little bit of errors that I made where I was clipping inside those boundaries and I should have, uh, should have accounted for the, br the broader area. But this has produced a, a map atlas, which looks at all selected suburbs within the Cairns sort of centre. And we're able, I, I think some of you had uh, work where you were comparing two maps. I mean, you can look at this and see that like, oh, there's a large amount of, a shared amount of larger lots and smaller lots within the CBD. Plus, there's also some regional ecosystem that is in, um, embedded in there. So that's what we're working towards. And for that, we'll need to bring in some plugins. Um, QGIS has a bunch of plugins, and they're really, it's really quite cool. Like, they have a lot of very, um, very in depth sort of. Uh, um, processes. So basically the ones that I would recommend for this 
workshop would be OzMap, which will give you the um, Queensland Globe base map. Uh, Autosaver, just because it's spatial software and it sucks sometimes. Um, and Quip, Quick Map Services, which uh, has the OpenStreetMap uh, base map as well. So yeah, getting back to my workspace, we're still downloading the files, are we? Or should be a couple of them going around. So also, like most spatial software, we can it's got a toolbox. So by um, opening this toolbox uh, here, it brings up the processing toolbox, and that way we can like type in, you know, I want to clip. Uh, I want to join. A cool one is because it doesn't actually have with the atlas mapping is creating grids. Is if you type in grid, create grid. Um, but if you type in like it does in ArcMap uh, Fishnet, it will take you to create grid, which is pretty cool. I think like it's sort of intuitive that way. Uh, there's parts of what I was suggesting in that um, sort of hackathon might be to utilise this um, modelling sector to build like a model on uh, within QGIS, which can then be exported as a Python script or other sort of scripting. And within my workspace, I always uh, have my your browser and I select my favourite. So I, the first part of it would be once you've got those files, go to the folder, like go on favourites, right click, Go to the folder where the um, root folder is, and I think this is the one for me. Select folder, yeah, and that'll bring in your file structure. So it brings you straight to the shape files, and um, QGZs or workspaces as it were. We're all good? Uh, yeah. mm. Okay. So I've given you um, a bit of information in those documents, in that file, the outputs. This is something I found online, which is a pretty, uh, pretty detailed type of way of making a map atlas. It's, I think it's based on the 2.18 build of QGIS. It was that long ago. But it gives you a bit of in insight into like how this can be utilised. Um, and then you, obviously this is a, a walkthrough for the full uh, sort of explanation of um, what we'll be doing today. I want us to sort of take us up to here because the start is just basically setting up your workspace. I think you're all pretty familiar with setting it up but I'll, I will go through it quicker than I would in that, but you can work through that at your own pace. So if you fall behind, um, I'm only restricted. I could go on forever, but... <laughs> so, yeah, just, just be aware that you can do that. And obviously, I, um, Desiree's got my email and my information from the last Matt chat. I'm happy to help with anything to do with this sort of stuff. I think it's really good that there's um, businesses and individuals that are able to take this on and do stuff themselves and build a business around this. I think it's great that it's available and it's more and more reliable as a foundation spatial software. Uh, so as well, sorry, there was another part of um, my workspace which is bringing in, bringing in layer styling panel. This is something I learnt as I went on uh, and it opens this layer styling. So as soon as I open my um, my workspace, sorry, I'll go back to one. We'll go back to one. Um, which you don't have this, but if you can bring in um, from folder one, Cadasta, Gazetta, um, or you can just bring in all these files. Just basically hold shift, drag, and it'll bring them into your. That should automatically set your e EPSG, but if it's not your um, coordinate system, set it here, type it in, 
GDA, 94, go to your zone. Uh, I've got mine set as my favourites because it's the only one I really use. And apply. Uh, like I was getting to, this layer styling uh, box is, if you're working with rasters especially or hill shades, this is undeniably the best tool and the best aspect of QGIS because you can set your hills, hill slope um, uh, ver uh, source, light source and that, but for just for layers, if you press on the layer, you can change the um, the, the symbology, bring in, um, uh, sorry, masks, what am I doing? No, because that won't have, uh, bring in labels. Oh, sorry, okay, let's not do that. Anyway, um, I won't apply that because I've already got a style on there. Um, but yeah, la layer styling is cool to have open. You can, you know, you can change the uh, change the colour on the fly. So it's changing the colour there. Yes, mate. Yes, mate. The browser, it's the same. Uh, right, right click your ribbon. Browser panel. Left click in the box ticket. Same with layers, usually inevitable. I thought, okay, usually that loads um, up immediately. And obviously you can minimise, it's all, you know, usual user friendliness. Uh, so what we're going to do first off, I'm just going to show you a little trick that I like, is we're going to type in clip in the processing toolbox. On clip, we're going to right click, and that'll bring up your batch processes. So not all layers can be processed as a batch process, but within QGIS, the cool thing is you can batch process point line polygons. As long as they're not multi-part polygons, it, it has a bit of an issue with that, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so your batch process will bring up this work space, and you're going to be doing three of the layers here, so we're gonna add three. Um, we're gonna do the gazetta, we're going to do the roads, and we're going to do the uh, cadaster. The Gazetta Roads and cadaster. I want to click clip this to. I'm pretty sure it's the study region. Yeah, I want to clip that to the study region, and then I'll just put it there and say I've got a bunch of layers there. Then I just press Auto Fill, fill down. It'll clip to that region. Uh, the cool thing about this is if you put the file line here in the output, so I'm going to make a new folder here just, just for working. And I'm going to change this type to a shape file. And I'm going to call it selected underscore. I'm going to press save, and then this box is going to come up about the autofill settings. I want to autofill with the parameter values, and my parameter to use for the parameter values is the input layer. Press OK, and that'll give me that folder file line with the selected prefix and then the input layer name. So once you run that, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't press bring in, sorry, I'll load layers on completion. That's my bad, I'll run it again, there we go. So what I did find was, so if I turn off these other layers and I put in my selected locality, selected lo uh, roads, they were all within that selection area. So now I don't know if many of you work with environmental stuff, but the regional ecosystem layer, um, 
is a multi-part polygon, so it has layers that overlap each other. So if I go into my information, identify features uh, c command here, which will show up here with all the features of it, you'll see that some of these uh, overlay each other. They're parts of the same part, so it has issue with clipping that. So the same again, we'll be able to clip it, but we'll clip it by a mask layer. Uh, clip vector by a mask layer, sorry, and that'll that'll retain the um, that'll retain the um, the multi-part polygons. It won't just separate them, whatever. Uh, when we clip it, we save it. You can save it to the same file. I'll go into my working file again. I think I called it. And that's clipped that to that region. Now, as you see, that's clipped that because that part is one part, so it's clipped it to that boundary. You see what I mean? So it's, it's very boundary specific. Otherwise, obviously, if you were to include, sorry, if you want to include that in your regional ecosystem, it's a bit broader than that clipped area. So even if I was to select by location, it would select a lot further out from that, from that boundary area. Everyone, sorry, I move a bit fast sometimes when I get in a groove. Is everyone cool? Way too fast? All right, sorry. I'm running out of time. This is not the, anyway, I've got, I've got other, I was just trying to show you the clip by, um, uh, the clip by batch and then the clip by multi-part polygon. Um, but that's okay, like I said, I've set it all out in that document so you can work through it and you should be able to get, like I said, you should be able to see what, which tools we're using and how we're using them. So if we're, to just because what I want to really focus on is themes and it was something that changed my entire life when I discovered themes in QGIS. So if you go to open, um, you can save this if you want, get back to it later. And what we'll do is we'll open Atlas 3. And if you have, sorry, there was, yeah, that's what I should have covered is there was uh, probably an error with the link to one of the layers it was on my local drive. Did we all manage that? No, no, the WMS isn't working properly because it um, doesn't show up in the output, but that's okay. Um, I'll show you how to change that later. But no, it was the link to the regional ecosystem layer because it was on my local drive, and when it was put on this, it was... Anyway, something we can cover up for another time. So if we open Atlas underscore three, this will take us to everything clipped and stylized. So to stylize the layers, there's a bit of instruction in here about um, select by location and select by uh, uh, expression. It's very it's a very simple thing to understand, but the more the more basic thing is what do you want to get out of the data? What do you want to investigate? Um, and there's multiple ways to do it. You can do it clip by expression, or just a selection by expression and extract. Um, I'll let you guys work through that. But just to keep in time with the, uh, with the hours, which this will take a bit of, um, going to look at themes. So themes are based on um, bringing in a designed map that you've created. The issue becomes when you create themes is that if you have one layer and you change this to, um, you change this to brown, it'll maintain as brown across all themes. But there's a way around this is to duplicate the layer and either rename it or keep it as that. 
it's exactly the same layer, but we're going to, we want it to be yellow instead. So if we're to create a theme, we go into this little eye in the layers menu, and it'll say add theme. So you add theme. We're going to call this one brown. And then we're going to turn that off. I'm going to turn this back on. We're going to add a theme. I'm going to call this one yellow. So then when we swap between the themes, and this is where the, it becomes really user... Um, user friendly in our in our outputs is we're able to define map frames by themes so then we can swap between these themes so I want to look at brown again or I want to look at yellow so then for our um, for our map output we wanted to look at um, We wanted to look at these layers set up with a base map. Now I've got Queensland map topo WMS loaded in here. Um, I've walked through the process in that work in that worksheet for you. Um, it, it helps if you're online. Uh, but the problem with Queensland topo is that once you go past, I think it's 8,000 scale, yeah, it doesn't work. So it's very scale dependent as a WMS, uh, which sort of sucks. But what will happen is, is that when you output the map with that, the base map will drop off. So it won't show as, as imagery on those, on those map frames. So what we'll do in here is we'll build those map frames and we'll keep it as Queensland Topo because I purely want to just do that as an exercise in futility to show you how to swap that out when you need to as an actual output um, at the output stage, at the layout stage. Uh, so if we, if we turn on, say, we want to look at our uh, regional ecosystem, which should be quite clear. Why isn't this showing up? Oh, that's just gone Barney. It wasn't on there? Oh, that's why. Yeah, because that was off my personal drive. So what we can do then... Which one? Oh, right, okay, right. So I might just bring that one in again. Probably because I've renamed it somehow, regional ecosystem. Yeah, it's in looking at one. Oh, well, this will this will make it easy. This will be good, okay. So, sorry, mistake, let's go back. From file, from folder two, Bring in um, selected Reg Eco. And we'll just blow this away and remove that other regional ecosystem layer. So, what we'll do in this is we'll stylize this now. So, if you double click on selected Reg, Reg Eco, and I'll just give you a bit of a run through. So in selected Reg Eco, if you go to Symbology and then into Categorised. So it's the top menu there in Symbology, Categorised. What we want is a value and that's the, what we'll do is we'll go for the Vegetation Management class. It's as you just scroll down. It'll be in vegetation management class. 
Press on that. And then at the bottom of the, the pop out there, there's a button called classify. Press that. And I think that's wrong. Hang on, let me just see. No, that's the one, sorry. VM poly you want, not VM class. Vegetation management poly. And that'll give you a classified layer list. If you press apply now, uh, it'll be stylized with that symbology. We don't want all of this. We only want um, uh, endangered dominant and of concern dominant. So if you hold control and select the others and leave those two and then just press minus and that'll leave you with those. Get rid of all other as well because that'll, yeah, get rid of all other as well which is this one here all other values. And press apply. And that'll... Sorry, yep. Okay, so if you press classify and then you go in, select them, control, select, 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 minus, down the bottom near classify, or delete. <laughs> the cool thing in here is you can you can either rename them in the main layer or rename them for clarity here. So what I'll do is I'll call these what they are. You don't need to. Dominant. I think it is. And this is all of concern. So these, so this symbology can be um, controlled individually for these. So what you can do is go into the symbol layer or double click on the actual symbol. I like these as gradients because it makes them shiny. Um, so if you go to, in all symbols down the bottom here, go to gradient fill and then select your colour, whatever it is. I'm just going to use gradient fills for these. Let's apply again. So that'll give you your selected regional ecosystem. Um, because this name, these names and these items are going to be turning up in our legend later when we produce our map, we'll just call this, we'll just go to right click on the layer and rename the layer and call this regional ecosystem. And you just click outside. So we're all good, do it or lose everybody again. We're all good. Keep going. I'll keep trying to lose you again. Okay. Um, now, I didn't realise this, this file, this atlas, hasn't set up the themes. But what we'll do is we'll set up the themes now just so I can um, show you in the final 
final layout um, and produce a final layout for this. So what we'll do is we want to show themes. Um, what we want to do is we want to produce one map that will show the regional ecosystem, one map that will show smaller lots be below 1,000 square metres, and one, one map that will show lots between 1,000 square metres and 5,000 square metres, or greater than 1,000 square metres and less than 5,000 square metres. Uh, so to do this, we have to set up the themes for each sort of style of map we want. We're going to start out with a re regional ecosystem, which I want it to be turned on with the roads layer, or the selected roads hierarchy layer. And I want this on the Queensland Globe imagery. Now, the Queensland Globe imagery is drawn from OzMap um, here. It's a plug-in that I suggested. And as you work through the worksheet, you'll see what, what it is and where it comes from in the plugins. Um, just as you add that, it'll, it'll add into your layer list. So it doesn't matter about the zoom at this time or the scale at this time. What we want to do is just have the layers that we're turning on for that eventual map build. So we're going to call this, we're going to add a theme here. And we're going to call this region eco. Press OK. Uh, now we want the other two maps to be fairly similar, but they're going to show the two different lot sizes of land. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the Queensland Globe imagery, we're going to turn off the regional ecosystem. And I won't need the roads hierarchy because the Queensland Topo has a really good roads um, layer in it. I'm going to turn on the Queensland, Queensland Topo and we'll create one for the smaller lots. Now that's a bit stark, the, the Queensland Topo map there is a bit too bright for this brown colour. Um, what I'm going to do is go into Queensland Topo, double left click, go into the uh, transparency and I'm just going to make this 70% which should be decent, maybe a bit more. Obviously, it's like most spatial outputs. You want it to be stylistically how you want it. Uh, so if, the, if you like a starker map in the background and you think it's justified, then leave it as is. Uh, now, that the transparency that I've applied to Queensland Map Topo, no matter what uh, theme I create now, that will retain that transparency. So I would have to create, I would have to introduce another Queensland topo map uh, without transparency. If I wanted, if I wanted to do so. So that would be something I set up say I want this because the larger lots are more stark than the smaller lots, I can leave that as low, no transparency on that. And I'll add the theme and I'll create, call this one large lots. I forgot to say, I forgot to set one up for my small lots. So I'm gonna go back, turn on my smaller lots and the transparent Queensland topo and add a theme, small lots. So now, what we can do then is just change between the themes to ch make sure everything we've done is correct. Um, regional eco, that's got the base map, large lots, it's got the large lots with no transparency on the base map, and then small lots, it's got the transparency on the base map with the same colour. Um, 
So now that we've, uh, we've created this theme, we'll be able to create our layouts with those three maps to get this, to have this final product output. So we're going to go into project. Going to go in into layouts down the bottom. And uh, isn't that, oh sorry, layout manager. Because I've saved this without layouts. We're going to create an empty layout. Going to call this Atlas. Now, before we start on this, we need to set up our print output and what, how we want our print to be, to be. So we need to go into page setup. In, uh, sorry, in layout, it's page setup. We're going to make this an A3 landscape output. What I also want to do is show my grids and snap to grids. I see everybody's stressing out, not, not being able to. Uh, so my grids, uh, layout options, sorry, in settings. Layout options. I changed my grid spacing to two mil. I'm just funny like that. Uh, it just gives me more more controllability. But you can go back into settings and change that to whatever you want. Say if you want a more square number like five, then change it to five. It's up to you how you want to set up your um, outputs. Now what we're going to do is is bring in those three maps to make that look um, like our desired output. I'm going to do trickiness and find my, just hold down left and sort of expand my map to find my centre lines, wherever they may be. There's one, there's the other. And then I'm going to drop that back about three grids and bring that in one. It's just aesthetically how I want it to look. And from this, I mean, the easiest way is just to control paste uh, co copy paste, sorry. And that'll give you three maps of an equal size. Sorry. So sorry. On the side panel here, there's a button called Add Map. Just left click, and then yeah, just drag, point, select, uh, hold, and drag the for the size of the map, which is handy because I actually need another one for my key map. So you just copy and paste them. It's better if they're the right if they're the same size. Um, now, for data management purposes, are we sorry? Yeah, key map. Yeah, of course. So we want it to look like that output. So for data management purposes, you'll see which map is selected by bold and these, um, uh, what do they call them, drag points or whatever around the map. So you can obviously make it bigger or smaller when the map is highlighted. Um, 
what I like to do is go into the item name and change this to what it is. Key map. This one here is going to be my regico. This one here is going to be my large lots. And this one here is going to be my small lots. So that makes it a lot easier when you start to bring in themes and um, what it's going to look like in the end. So if we go back, I did forget something. If we go back, as I do I always do, if we go back to the um, QGIS menu, then we can just go straight back to the map. Um, let's close that, don't need that anymore. So just go back to the map, close whatever's open. So I've got, why is my plugin still coming up? Anyway, um, I, forgot to build a, I forgot to build an Atlas um, theme. So I'm going to switch this off. Um, I'm going to bring in, switch that off as well, I'm going to bring in from folder 2, select a locality in my browser, I'm going to stylize this just to be um, no fill, my stroke colour I just want red. I'm going to pump this up. It's going to make the stroke width a bit bigger. They're all good there. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So in the symbology, um, go into simple fill, and it'll be fill color, then fill style, and just open that, and put that at no brush. And your stroke colour, just make that red. And also, yeah, just bring it up to just, I think, well, mine is 0.66, but just a bit thicker, basically, to be, be quite clear. Just press apply to check it's done. That looks okay. Press OK. And then I'm going to set this up as my key map um, theme. So if we go in again, create a theme in the layers menu, add theme. I call this key map. And if we go back down to the QGIS in the taskbar, QGIS menu, there'll be, you can go straight back into Atlas. So, from here we're going to set each theme to the map bounds. So, because we've done that work of data management where we've set them up with our names, it makes it a lot easier even to call it, you know, key, eco, large, small, whatever you want to call it, just makes it easier for you. Um, we are going to... In item properties, in the items menu, there's layout, and then there's item properties. For key map, I'm going to follow the map theme under layers. I'm going to follow the map theme, key map. And then I'm going to, within this, you need to change your command to move item content. So currently you're on select move item. You need to change to move item content.
and that'll let you move what's in the map. So then you can have a look and set and say, well, I think this key map needs to be 300,000. Close to it, yeah, that's about it. So, so the move by content is this one. Sorry, am I showing? Oh, okay. Um, next to, yeah. So we'll, we'll continue to just ch set up our map themes for each map frame. Uh, and it's looking a little bit like sparse without it being, I don't want to do that. Oh, because I've got to go back to select, move. So you've got to, you've got to have this activated, sorry. Um, these are looking sort of sparse without having frames on them or neat lines. So for each one that you select, we'll activate that individually. Um, what I'll do is, as I, as I put on the theme, I'll also put on the frame. So you just scroll down on the item properties for key map and there will be a tick box for frame and that will give you a frame around, or neat line around the map. So for, as I go through the different map frames, I'm going to go first off into item properties, follow map theme, regional eco or region, region eco. Um, and then I'm going to throw a frame on it. This one is large lots. I'm going to go to large lots. And this one is small lots. I'm going to go to small lots. So I'll, I'll add frames to these two. So from there, you could possibly just print a map as you wanted it of that region with having those three different themes. And then you've got that in your workspace for good. They'll stay there. Um, the other part of this is bringing in the Atlas feature, um, which is basically utilising a layer to control the feature. Now, the good thing about QGIS Atlas is you can use um, points or polygons. You can create a grid. And um, with, with the grid or with a polygon, as I'll use, I'm going to use the locality or suburbs to create our Atlas. Um, if I go into Atlas, are we all there? Sorry, so yeah, it's just, it's so within any layer, it's, they're all going to be controlled by the Atlas. It's just within the items list, so it's Atlas along the items list here. No, it should, you gotta, you gotta turn it on first. You're gonna control, control it by Atlas. So if you go to Atlas here, you see, so it's in the whatever layer is selected, doesn't matter. And then generate an atlas. Turn this on. Our coverage layer, like I said, whether it be a grid, point or polygon, is going to be what the atlas is, utilises to move around the page. So our coverage layer for this is going to be... Uh, selected, oh god, there's so many. I might just rename the one I need. Uh, 
trying to rename this, just so I know. I'm going to confuse the hell out of you. But this is more just for show anyway. Like I said, go through the document. You'll find it a lot easier. So if you go to Coverage Layer and go to Selected Locality, that will control the atlas. We haven't turned this on yet, so what it's doing is just setting up the fact that we want to generate an atlas. This is what the coverage layer is going to be. Um, which is, like I said, the grid, basically, that you want to follow. Uh, the cool thing about this is we can start to build around this, the information that we want to show or that we want to draw from this atlas. So we're going to utilise the locality in our page name. Um, we're going to sort by the locality. So it's going to go from A to Z on the suburb names. That can also be a unique ID. So you can have it 1 to 10 or like high yield, low yield, medium yield, whatever. Whatever you want it to show, you can build that in to, into the layer as a, um, as a row, uh, as a column, sorry, of that layer information and then apply it here in the atlas and it will utilise that to sort the data as it wants to show it. Then we need to turn the, the atlas on. So up here is the Preview Atlas button. Once we activate that, it should work perfectly. Probably not though. But what I want you to do is, we'll get to that. What I, what I want you to do is go back to um, each of the three other maps first. And then, sorry, no, the key map only. So I want you to go to the key map. And then I want you to go into item properties. Because you need to turn this on as an overview. So we know where we're looking. So we go back into the key map. Item properties here. Scroll down, go into overviews, press plus, add a new overview. I want to change this frame style. We can leave it as default, but I prefer to just have a black outline. So we go back into the layer styling. Simple fill, sorry, simple fill. No brush fill. Solid line stroke. Turn it up a bit. What that'll do is that'll create a black box around the areas that we're at. So, overview, add, double click on the overview one, change that to whatever you want to call it, frame area, whatever, go into map frame, you know, sorry, go into frame style, go into simple fill and then change the polygon style. No fill or no brush, solid line. Now, the tricky part is in each of the other map frames. So reg eco, large lots, small lots, you want to do, you want them, so if you scroll up, sorry, you want each of these until you can see this controlled by Atlas. 
So not the key map, but the other three, you want these controlled by Atlas. So as you go from this controlled by Atlas, um, what I like to do is leave it, is if it's an oddly shaped polygon, like this suburb area, is to just make it a margin of, say, 2%. Um, so then you go and do that same. So as you scroll down in item properties, control by Atlas, the same for large lots and for Reg Eco. Now, sorry, now you can press on your preview atlas. Mm, no, I'm on the wrong one here, I think. Sorry. Oh no, that's right. I always thought it was overviews. Sorry. Sorry, there, what? Oh, map prone. Oh, of course, yes, sorry. Yes, that's what I was missing out on. I'm glad somebody knows what they're doing around here, Jesus. Now, like I said, the, the document is obviously where you want to go to. I'm trying to get in as much as possible. I, I timed this and it does go for a lot longer. And that's moving at my pace, which is just uh, not, not equal when you're trying to learn. There was, um, so this is cool. So what it does is when you do those, if you were to have, say, a grid um, and you create an overview, you can sort of have it, it what it does is it matches the map frame itself. So that's where that map frame information comes from, is it matches that extent. So if I was to use a grid and I'd put 2% on there, it would show the grid and then 2% around the grid. So it will show you that overview um, of the actual map frame. And because these are tra uh, rectangular, which one did I... Uh, sorry, so if I went here and then I went to... Sorry, did this... So it's on large lots, so this one. Um, if I was to change this to the, it's controlled by that map frame of large lots in the overview. See how the box changes. So it will match the frame of that map So I was going to go through a bit more of the text items, but I just want to show you one little thing that I thought was cool. Um, what I did in the output was I created a fake map and I put all the layers in there. And 
it was basically it was based on this controlled by this atlas so it still only showed what layers were showing in that extent of the um, of the frame. Um, that's a little bit more tech, but when you start to introduce like the legend, it adds everything in there, and you can you can adjust the legend um, to work better. But I've always found that just creating a dummy map off the side is probably the best um, the best way to deal with it and then just have a have a theme with all layers in there you can do the same thing as just set it up as one of these map frames controlled by this atlas um, but the coolest thing I found was working in other software doesn't give us the ability to render text very well um, so we have to use if we wanted to say put in um, uh, put in uh, shadow text or put in a um, superscript 2 or something like that we can't actually do that in our text we have to fiddle with it but within the document I've actually included some information on how to bring in um, super text and uh, this one is for I've deciphered this a little bit but it's this is creating a label which will create a drop shadow so it will be like a halo around the around the words like come out something like this um, also if I wanted to say um, show the area of uh, the the shape area which is the layer I'm going to drop this in and see so see how that sorry I'll get in see how that's showing you like this so what's that what that's doing is that's drawing the shape area from the locality um, layer. What I'm able to do is add some HTML scripting in there and if I render as a HTML it makes it a superscript. So you're able to actually bring in um, HTML coding to adjust the, f the text look and then when we do so all the information is being drawn from the um, the locality layer so then we can just add in another text box and we want to draw in an expression so we want to draw in information from that locality layer I'm going to go into the item properties of that text box go into fields and values it pull in locality just double click on it now this is yeah, it, this is all explained like I said but this is really cool is it'll it'll bring in the name of the map where it's looking I'll format that text sorry that's my bad having issues oh, I've gone offline that's why hmm. I'll just put in the, anyway. that's it should still be saying changing the extents I'm 
electron hookup again. What the hell? <laughs> Has the glorious leader come yet? No, we're still, we're still waiting. Oh, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's good for you. So the other aspect, the other aspect of this in is obviously bringing in um, scale bars, and you can stylize the scale bars through the item properties as well. So. Um, you know, you can make it kilometres, metres, feet, yards, um, multipliers of one, and where's the uh, where's the style? Oh, display. Is it? Yeah. Uh, well, above segments, I'm going to put. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of power behind layouts. It's just, you just need to play with this stuff to find out how it works. Um, I'm heading to the end of my road here. But also there's one more, and like I said, in, within the within the document I've included a bit of a sort of a, a mud map of what the, each thing does. Uh, I've, I've also included a little added extra on the bottom of that just to show you how to um, create other types of uh, other types of atlases based on grids and points. Oh, back on, okay. Must be a 5G thing. So with the, the good thing about the, um, I'll just make a few more points. The good thing about the uh, themes is, is their dynamics so but you need to change the theme and, s and replace the theme before the theme will show. So as long as the theme is the same, um, which was a whole lot of gobbledygook, but if I go to large lots and I realise that with the output the Queensland topographic map doesn't show, um, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to, in my, um, in my plug-in, for, uh, what was it, plug-in for quick map services that I brought in earlier. I'm going to bring in the open street map. So all I do is press this first layer here, open street map, open street map standard, and that'll bring in a usable base map for those to replace the Queensland topo. Now, this is still not a theme. Um, what I'll have to do is, because I've turned off that Queensland topo map and turn this on, so if I was to go back to the atlas, it still retains the Queensland topo map as the map. Um, so once I save this theme for large lots, And I go back to my atlas and I shift through the pages. The theme has been updated. Also bringing in pictures, so, so we want to make sure we all know it's fungus stuff. Bring in a little, this one here, which is add picture. 
and you just go to raster image find your picture whatever you want to add in and there you go you got your fungus picture Now it's a fair way off this one, but uh, all that is is Atlas Fall is a finished product. But what we'll do is first, before we open that finished product, is just so I can show you some other aspects of that, is you can export your Atlas as a template. So besides saving it as a project, we'll, which will link it to the workspace that you're currently in, which is Atlas underscore 03, you can save a template. So if you want this same structure uh, across your corporate sort of standard as being the three maps with the scale, the um, fungus uh, image and different parts of it, depending on those layers, uh, you can just save this as a template. And then bring that up later when you load when you load layouts. So if I'm to get out of this, and then I'm just going to save this as as it is for the minute. I'm going to open number four, which has all our finished product in there. And then we go to project and layouts. Open up Eco Atlas. And as you see, it's a little bit messy. So this is because the atlas hasn't been activated um, as an atlas. So once you press that, all the information that's drawn from and everything will be brought in. So like I said, what I did was here was made a sacrificial map with every layer in there. Now when you print, that won't show up. So it's actually pretty good to sort of develop all your legend items in that but it will follow if you for map 5 it will follow the conventions of that atlas being performed so it will only show the layers within that frame in the map So as long as within your sacrificial la layer, if you have all your layers, just make sure that you control it by the atlas. Should be. The layout. So, okay, open number four. In project, go down to layouts, it'll be an eco atlas. No worries. So, the other one there, atlas review, was just something I mocked up very quick. Um, but go back to this eco atlas, you can sort of check that out. Um, just, I just wanted to have, have you look at some of this texting, this text work that I did. Um, See, always make sure you're on select because if you're on map, it won't let you select stuff. It'll just let you draw a map. Or if you're on um, move content, it won't let you actually select anything, which freaked me out to start with. But yeah, if you go, it's 
QGIS is very dependent on selection, so you have to have it selected most of the time. Um, and as you can see here, I've utilised this as a render as a HTML, so I've thrown some HTML in there um, to get that done. Now, if I was to just quickly, before I finish up, um, open up the other layouts and I open up Atlas Review. So again, I'll preview Atlas. And all I've done here was um, within, within the local plans layer, I've created a scale column, just an integer, just created some number. Uh, so you can have an, in, like um, ArcGIS, which has, uh, you can control the atlas by a layer. You can create a scale and then it can control the layer. And that's basically what you do is you select the map frame. In the main properties in scale, you just call the, call the field that you want to control the scale. It's a little drop down here. And activate the scale. So if you've got multiple, say you've got multiple regions and you've got, say, one area but you've got multiple sample types and they're different scales, you can set up those samples to be to have their own scale. So maybe one's at 3,000, one's at 1,000, one's at 10,000, um, however you want to show it. Um, it's, it's all intuitive. It's, a, it's all dependent on you and how you want to show your data. For this particular case, I just used basically something that we might use um, for a, a, a area investigation is a, a map at 3,000 and then a map at 6,000. So I've doubled the scale. And then for a very simple reason is that, you know, like we may have points that we're investigating where we want to see is there a drainage line into that point or something where we can't see at that finer detail. We know where the point's located but we don't know what's impacting that point. Uh, so as you work through, see obviously it's... And all this was based on, uh, this imagery was based on setting up an atlas of a point file and then using the place name as as a uh, as a text box so if i was to turn this local places on i don't think i set up a uh, i did set up a view do, do, do. sorry aerial So if you've got, say, um, what it'll do is you can set your point as a centroid for these map frames within the atlas. So they'll base their, base their view off those centroids. And all they are is different scales. There's more, more of a very simplistic type of printout of what you want to look at, but... What I'm saying is a lot of my work in mining and stuff like that was wet and dry readings of, um, of groundwater points. So all that was was basically this point in the dry season is, uh, you know, depth of six metres. This point in the wet season is depth of three metres. What's the outflows? What's the, what's the water in that region type thing doing? Um, so yeah, you could utilise it for something like that, a comparison, or like a comparative land use, where you could start to, you know, turn off uh, 
turn off themes and then just turn on layers. Have a look at it in that sense. But yeah, it's all about, you, I mean, you can do that on the fly. Um, turn off the layers for this one too. And we'll turn on small lots and large lots. And we'll have a look at our atlas again. Which is nowhere it seems, so there we go. Better yet, we can look at look at what we were looking at initially, which is a regional ecosystem for large lots within the Cairns Centre region, which is even worse. It's a regional ecosystem. Oh, I must be the wrong layer again. Um, so anyway, yeah. So there's a lot of lot of power behind that. Um, I would recommend, obviously, because I moved way too quick and with way too many points in that, that you go through the um, walkthrough. Uh, it's got good information there on some of the coding and setting up your um, atlas. What I will recommend, though, is as you go, don't be afraid of map info, I mean of QGIS, a Freudian slip. It, no, be afraid of map info. Be very afraid. Oh God! Um, no, don't be afraid of QGIS. Like I said, the, it's a very usable program. The only thing is, it takes time to work out that. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm, I've got this selected in the menu, but I want to edit regional eco. Well, you know, I'm, I can't just press edit. I've got to actually be on the layer to edit it. And, you know, if I go into there what is within this properties, you know, what is what is characterised, what is, you know, rule-based, all this sort of stuff. So don't let it get to you. I would also, if you're using regular layers within this, is to save styles and play around, you know, have a look at what these tools and plugins can do for you, not what you can do for them. Uh, also, a yeah, big thing I've found is Ausmaps. I think that's that's an embedded plugin now. Ausmaps, not it's not. Yeah, still have to plug in. Okay. Um, and quick was it Quick Map Services? It's very cool. I've just started to use this more because I found that. Bringing in the WMS of Queensland Topo is not very reliable. Um, I think that's because it's gone to the ARC basis, so it doesn't have that scale um, that I require. But yeah, there you go. Sorry for ruining your hour, hour and a half afternoon, but I hope you got something out of it. Any qu <laughs> totally ruined my afternoon. <laughs> okay, good. Now, like I said, um, uh, Desiree's got my email, contact me anytime and I know we've got a few stars down the back there as well that can help out um, if there's ever any issue. Uh, was there any questions or anything more general? Yes, Scott. No, I don't think so. Yeah, you've got to be... Con yeah, I... I there's only one way I've done it, and that's by clip georeference and everything else. But that's not—that's totally illegal. <laughs> Did it for my own benefit, and not as a part of Cancer Regional Council or any other. <laughs> I think the, the only way you could really get around that is by going to Q imagery and getting the plates. Um, but yeah, I don't think I don't think there's any other service that, that does it. Uh, obviously, with a lot of people in here now, there's the drone technology, which is uh, giving them really rich base maps. I'd love to get my hands on that sort of data, but you know, it's a, a priority. Anyone else? Anything? that I missed or that you'd like to talk about with this in whole Atlas deal? Yeah. I have one question. Yes, Alistair. Um, 
I am seeking fundraising donations, and it's funny you mentioned... Oh, I shouldn't go on the internet. Maybe my... <laughs> uh, so where was I, Mobros? I'm not worried about the internet. I'm worried about what I've been searching for in the last... <laughs> yeah, we might leave that. I'll, I'll, send, it to, I'll send it to you, Alistair. <laughs> I think, uh, look, I think, and that's, uh, it's funny you brought that up, is I had a discussion with somebody the other night who swore black and blue that Movember was all about prostate cancer, and I'm like, well, it was until they discovered that male suicide was the number one killer of males in the modern era, so it has become a mental health, help, male health type issue, and like I said to him, the only thing we can do as males is not be, oh, I'm right, it's just something in my life is actually talk about it and have a chat and, you know, get it out there because we're all hurting at one stage of our lives and we all need a bit of support from anybody, so, yeah. All right, well, I'm sure I've, <laughs> sure I've driven you some, some of you to depression now, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the, now that you've got that packet um, have a look through this there's a lot of little tips and there's a cool little section where it starts to pull in some of that html goodness um, and that'll like this sort of stuff for drop shadows is awesome anyway